This video is part of a whole course called Fix It in Post. If you want to see the next segment, How to Fix Shaky Footage, where you'll learn how to fix jittery footage the easy way, we're giving it to you for free. Just click on the link in the description and follow the directions. Let's be honest, nobody really gets the color balance right on a shoot. There's inevitably going to be some footage that will need fixing in post. That's where color correction comes in. We'll be showing you how to read color scopes and monitors, how to use color correction tools to fix your footage, and even how to use secondary color correction to make sure your footage can look its best. You know, one of the most ironic parts of color correction is that the tools that are meant to help you the most, such as waveform monitors, vector scopes, and the RGB parade, they're also some of the most confusing to learn. So we're going to do our best to show you how each of these tools can help you make your footage look great. Let's start by opening our editing program and repositioning our windows in a color correction layout. Now, most editing programs will have a pre-made color correction window layout that will make this task a lot easier. If you chose this preset, you may still want to reposition some windows to make your color correction tasks easier. Since we're using Adobe Premiere, we had to go to our reference monitor window and click on the output option. With the drop down menu open, we chose to display the vector scope, RGB parade, and waveform monitor. Let's first look at the waveform monitor. Simply put, the waveform monitor is a visual representation of the brightness values in your image. If you look at our footage, you can see the brightest areas are represented by a rise in the waveform level seen right here. On the left of the monitor, you'll see a series of numbers. Basically, they refer to incremental brightness values set by the Institute of Radio Engineers, but you don't really need to know much about that. All you really need to know is that you should avoid letting the darkest areas of your image fall below 7.5 IRE and the lightest above 100. Otherwise, you'll be losing some of the detail in your image. Now, it's okay if some parts of your image go above or below these values for now. But before you hand the video off to a television station, you'll need to make sure you stay within these boundaries. The next monitor we'll look at is the RGB Parade. This is the same thing as the Waveform Monitor, except that it has three graphs for each channel of color in your video. This can be helpful when trying to find out which colors need more or less saturation when color balancing your image. The last helpful monitor is the Vector Scope. The Vector Scope shows the color or chroma values of your image. Of all the monitors, this one can be the most confusing for first-time editors, so we'll break down what each part of the monitor represents. To do this, it's helpful to look at a color wheel. Just as a color wheel shows the primary colors of red, green, and blue, as well as the secondary colors of cyan, magenta, and yellow, the vector scope shows these colors as well. Here's the blue, green, and red areas, as well as the cyan, magenta, and yellow. It's also helpful to know that the center of a vector scope represents completely unsaturated or black and white footage, while the outermost ring of the vector scope represents 100% color saturation. Using these tools, you can accurately know when saturation and brightness are perfect in your image. Take a look at an extreme example. Here we have a triangle that goes from light gray to a dark gray. As you can tell, our vector scope is showing no data since there is no color in the image. And you can also see that we have a perfect representation of our triangle in our waveform and RGB parade monitors. The reason the RGB parade monitor is showing a value for red, green, and blue is because it takes equal parts of those colors to form white in a video image. If we decide to add some green to the black and white image, you can see that our vector scope shows a straight line toward the green area of the graph and our RGB parade shows a rise in the green brightness values. If instead we merely raise the brightness values of our triangle, then our waveform monitor will reflect that by raising as well. Now that we have a basic knowledge on how to monitor color, it's time to get our hands dirty and do some color correction of our own. There are a bevy of tools you could use to correct your footage, but we'll just be looking at three of the most common. No doubt about it, the most popular color correction tool is the three-way color corrector. This tool gives you precise control over your white, gray, and black color balance in your image, as well as a hue and saturation control. In a nutshell, it has just about everything you'll need. We're going to use this tool to fix a wedding shot with some color balance issues. 
As you can see, the highlights in our footage are orange instead of white. We could just add a lot more blue to counterbalance the orange in the image, but we may as well let our expensive editing software do the work for us. By selecting the eyedropper tool next to the white balance option, we can actually click on an area in the image that should be white and let the software judge how much blue to add to the image instead. This way you can see that the center circle moved closer to the blue side of the color wheel to compensate. Now to get even more precise, you can also take a sample of an area that should be neutral gray in the image as well as the darkest area to get a good black balance. From here, we can slightly tweak the color by moving the dot closer or further from the blue values until our image looks natural. Taking a quick look at our Wave 4 monitor, you can see that this piece of footage also has too little contrast. Our blacks are well above zero and our whites aren't getting close to 100. As a result, we'll want to use the input level slider to give our image more contrast. By sliding the triangle up from the black side, we can make the darkest gray areas of our footage become fully black, like these areas here. But if we slide the white side to the left, we can brighten our scene until some areas are reaching the 100 IRE value in our Wave 4 monitor. Unfortunately, as a result of our color correction, we've lost some color saturation in our scene. One look at our vector scope confirms that. So let's fix that using this tool. First, we'll want to click on the drop down menu next to Tonal Range, and we'll select Master. This will allow us to add saturation to the highlights, gray areas, and dark areas of our image. From there, we can scrub our master saturation level until our vector scope shows a healthy amount of color in our image. It's sometimes helpful to turn the effect on and off to see the difference your color correction made. You can see that ours has changed quite a bit from how it first appeared. Even though it may seem like we're done with our color correction, there's still more that we can do. We can do some secondary color correction. For example, this footage of a rose garden has corrected levels and color balance, but has oversaturated levels in our red channel. To fix this, we can use a color correction limiter, or in the case of Premiere Pro, a change color effect to lose the red saturation while keeping the rest of the image intact. With the effect now applied, we can simply select the eyedropper tool next to Color to Change and click on the rose in our image. From here, we can change our view to Color Correction Mask in order to see our selected area more clearly. It might be best to bring up the tolerance level until the rose is fully selected or soften the area of the selection to include more of the rows. Once that's done, we can switch our view back to the final result and lower the saturation until our vector scope shows safe red levels. Now our rose has a similar saturation to the rest of our scene, and the footage is ready to put on the big screen. Color correction. It's one of the most important parts of video editing. It not only fixes bad color, but shapes the emotion of your scenes in a way that will connect with your audience. By using the tools we've shown you, you'll be on your way to making your video look great. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch the next video in this course, How to Fix Shaky Footage, where you'll learn how to fix jittery footage the easy way, follow the link in the description and we'll give it to you for free.